call the regular meeting of the Orient Township Board of Trustees to order for Monday, December 19th, 2022. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I would like to, at this time, ask Trustee Dalrymple to call the roll. Chris Barnett. Here. Donnie Steele. Here. Brian Burney. Here. Julia Dalrymple. Here. Kim Urbanowski. Here. And uh, Mike Flood and Clerk Schultz have um, let us know that they are both a little, they are under the weather. We're glad they're not here, but we wish them well. Um, so they're absent with notice. Um, we always start our meetings with a couple things, invocation and pledge. Um, I don't think Pastor Josh is here, so um, half our town is sick right now, I think. So um, I'll ask you to stand, and if we could have, um, where's Martinez? Could you come forward? You're going to lead us in the pledge tonight. Oh. <laughs> come on up. Yeah, come on down. Hey, we get to, and this will make sense to the rest of you in a little bit. Um, you know what, I'll, and I'll, I'll open us up. I don't know if I've ever done it, but I'll, I'll uh, keep, the, keep it rolling with the invocation so then uh, Martinez will lead us in the pledge afterwards. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, for this amazing community that we have the opportunity to serve and for our, our great residents that are here tonight. Uh, we pray for a, a good meeting, and we thank you for the blessings you've bestowed on our community. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. You may be seated for a few minutes. <laughs> we'll call you back up shortly. <laughs> that was the, by the way, that was the last part of your exam. We didn't tell you, but you passed. <laughs> all right. Um, if you're really confused, just look at item uh, 9H and you'll understand what, what's going on here shortly. All right, uh, next we have to do um, hold, hold our annual public hearing for the 2023 proposed budget. Um, if you didn't know, by statute, it's the, most, it's the number one responsibility of your elected township board is to approve, adopt and approve a budget every year, and this is the meeting we do that. Uh, the first thing we do is we hold a public hearing to take comments from the public, if there are any, regarding the proposed budget. The budget um, is, is available on our website as well as in our packets tonight and everything we see you can see. Um, at this time, I would open up the floor to the public if anyone would like to make a comment on the 2023 budgets prior to their adoption at tonight's meeting. Anyone? And we have received, as far as I know, and uh, nothing was forwarded from the clerk's office, nothing came to me by way of public comment via email. So seeing no one rush forward, we will be discussing the budget and the first item of pending business. We will close the public hearing and declare that it was held at 7.08 p.m. Uh, and we'll move on in our agenda to uh, presentation. Uh, one of the things we're working on is uh, long range planning and that has uh, a lot to do tonight with what you don't see, what's underground or underground infrastructure. And we're joined tonight by our new uh, public services director, Bill Basigal and Jim Stevens, our engineering consultant from OHM Engineers. I believe Jim's gonna take the lead on this uh, presentation regarding our sanitary sewer study as well as our capital improvement plan. Good evening, Mr. Stevens and I will I'll try to go through the slides for you here. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor, members of the board. Um, as you may recall, probably a little over um, a year ago, we did uh, essentially a flow metering and sanitary sewer system study and analysis. The first um, time that we did this analysis was back in 2007. So as the community develops, it's always good to kind of do a, a, a recheck of your sanitary sewer system so you understand how it ages, how are the flows, how are the capacities. Um, it's certainly you want to provide a level of service where we're, we don't run into issues when we have large rain events and that type of thing as it relates to basement backups or sanitary sewer overflows and those types of things. So a study of this nature is, is really a proactive way to manage your system um, on an ongoing basis so that you have an idea of what your, how your system performs. And, um, and as your community develops, you know that you have the necessary infrastructure in place to, to support it. So tonight I'm just gonna try to do a quick summary and, and, and report of the findings, which I can 
go to a quick conclusion, just let you know that your system is in great shape. Um, it's, it's extremely dry, which is a very good thing. Um, and um, there's only a couple minor things that we, um, our, our office and, and the DPW will pay attention to over the next year or so to maybe identify a couple spots where, where we notice some issues. But overall, very good news. The system is very well managed and proactively managed. Um, so you're in very good hands. So here's a quick a little outline of, of the study and of the, of the presentation tonight. And I will try to just make it as, as brief as possible and open it up to questions. So um, next slide, Mr. Supervisor. Mm -hmm. um, so project goals for a study of this nature, again, is to analyze existing and future capacities of your sanitary sewer system. Um, we're comparing this uh, current model to the 2007 model, again, to see how the system has performed over time as it continues to age. We want to analyze whether or not there's any inflow and infiltration sources. Essentially, things like that are like broken pipes near wetlands where water can come into your system. Um, maybe open manholes where water can come into your system during a rain event. Um, and then to certainly assess the system for capacity for future growth and future development in the township. Um, a little bit of the background, again, the, the, the first model and study was, uh, uh, was in 2007. And essentially the result of that is a tool that we use on an ongoing basis with planning and zoning. And it's essentially what we call capacity maps. So it's essentially maps of your system and available capacity. So as developments come in, when we write our review letters and say whether or not your system has capacity to handle the development, we refer to this data and these maps are a simple tool to get those answers quickly. So a study of this nature really, um, it's, it's a very sort of a simple outline. The first thing you gotta do is collect flow meter data. So you put meters in your, in your system at various points, essentially at trunk lines, main sewers. So you, you essentially analyze through those meters how much flow is running through it. Then you also collect rain data, because as you, know, you have a large storm event, some of that water would inherently get into your system, and those are the moments where you wanna make sure that your pipes have capacity to, to handle all those flows that come in. So you collect the data, that process usually takes six to eight months, because you're collecting it over a long period of time. You wanna collect rain events during that time and see how the system uh, performs when you have those large thunderstorms and those types of things. Then we essentially take all that data, we throw it into um, uh, a model, electronic model, and then we analyze how those, how that system will react under uh, design events. So if, as an example, you might see your system when you have like say two inches of rain. Well, we wanna have a model that mimics how your system will perform when there's three inches of rain or four inches of rain and those types of things. So then we essentially prepare a report and give you the key findings and then any areas where we think we gotta pay attention to for future capital improvements. Um, so as part of your system, you can see the, the quick map here. We essentially modeled 30 miles of your system. Um, a lot of your local pipes and subdivisions, those aren't things that you, you, know, you essentially need to model because of th their size in such a fashion that they easily handle those flows. So you're essentially modeling your main trunk lines. Um, we installed 10 temporary meters. Um, it's probably hard to see on the screen, but those, those temporary meters um, are identified on, on this uh, map. Um, in addition, the county has permanent meters where your flow leaves the community. Um, and we certainly you know, bring that data into the model so we can analyze essentially um, all those flows together. Um, here, those are the three major outlets from the township that the, that, that the county meters, and then again, the, the 10 temporary meters. And we essentially saw the, installed eight of those meters at the same location. So again, you have a, um, an understanding of the history and how the system is performing over time. So part of um, when you create the model is you wanna calibrate it. So you, you build this model, you can run different scenarios with it, and then you analyze it back to how the system performed under the real-time conditions of those meters. And when you have uh, basically a predicted flow and an actual flow, typically they say within 20% is when the model is relatively accurate. In this case, we were, we were within about 8% of observed values, which is really good. 
This is just a little chart. Um, so essentially what you have there, what's called dry, DWF is called dry weather flow. So this is your, your sewer flow when there's no rain event, when there's no additional water that makes its way into your system. And then you have what's called the peak flow, which is when you have essentially a rain event. And in this case, um, the standards for a peak flow is a 10 year, a 10 year design event. And you can see what your peaking factor is. So essentially, when you have peaking factors of somewhere between like two and four, those are considered relatively dry systems. You start getting above that, then they start going, hey, that's a little bit of a wet system. You might have I and I that you need to, to pay attention to. So as you can see, there's one district there where, again, as you get, we get further into it, is where we've identified in areas that we'll, we're gonna have to do a little bit of further analysis to, to pay attention to. This is just the breakdown of the same data, but of those, of those detailed 10 meters. As part of the study also, you've got several pump stations throughout your system. And again, we uh, uh, analyze those stations that relates to the flows that go through them. And as you can see to the, to the far right, that's got the remaining capacity of those pump stations under future peak flow conditions. And as you can see, a lot of your stations are, are in um, very good condition as it relates to available capacity for future development. So as part of when, you, when we're analyzing future flows it, is we look at what kind of build out the township could experience. So we're looking at your master plan, your, your, your zoning map and vacant properties. And we predict basically how much additional sewer use um, the township will generate for those future developments. So essentially we do an analysis of the whole community, identify all those additional what we call REUs, which are residential equivalent units. And we put those additional REUs again into the model along with um, the peaking factors and, and that type of thing to get your future flows predicted for when the township's built out and, and understand how the system reacts to that. So again, this is just a quick chart to break it down by the county districts of you know, your, your current REUs as well as your build out REUs and then and it flows related to that. <coughs> then you take essentially those peaking factors that we showed on the previous slide. Again, the peaking factors when you have that 10 year rain event. And so you, <coughs> you essentially we have your, your future, what's called dry weather flows. Then we apply those peaking factors to get your future, um, your future peak flows. And then again, those future peak flows are put into the model to analyze how the system reacts. So essentially, in summary, I think it started, it started, it's all really good news. So under existing conditions, the systems can safely convey flows. Under your 10-year peak uh, flows, uh, existing conditions, the uh, system can convey, convey flows. <laughs> as well as your future flows, you've got about 6,000 feet of 10 inch trunk sewer, which is slightly surcharging, which means that um, the pipe capacity and the amount of flow that's coming into it under that future 10 year peak condition, it causes the sewage to slightly head up, which means it rises a little bit above the top of the pipe. So the pipe is kind of under pressure essentially. Um, and that's what we analyze to make sure that that elevation is nowhere near a, built, uh, you know, a basement or a building or that type of thing. Um, so next slide. Um, basically the resulting, uh, uh, um, uh, the capacity maps essentially again is a quick tool that we use to analyze, to make sure that as developments come in that you're, you know, where they come in at is, is looked at to make sure that there's no issues with capacity. Green is essentially less than 30% of available capacity. Um, and you can see in this particular case, which is existing dry weather flows, your whole system's green. So if you wanna quickly, uh, scroll through through these uh, slides. So here's your um, peak flows, existing conditions. If you can see on the, uh, and then future, go ahead, you can go to the next one. And then future dry weather flows, and then if you go to the future peak flow. So that little section right there is the section that is approaching its pipe capacity, and in some cases slightly exceeding it. And in that area is essentially through the, the vacant area of the Ball Mountain Rec area. So that's the area that we'll do a little bit of investigation to understand why is it peaking so much, which again, generally indicates that there's a source of I and I, you know, maybe a leaky joint, um, you know, maybe there's a manhole that water's getting into, that type of thing. So that's the area that 
um, we'll do some further investigation. And then here's just a profile view when I talk about the, the water heading up in, in the pipe and then kind of starting to create elevations. You can see the blue line, that's called the hydraulic grade line. That's the line of the elevation of the water level within the system. And again, you can see it's nowhere near causing an overflow. It's not in area areas of building or basement, so it's very, very little low risk. But again, it's something that we want to pay attention to and investigate because it, it appears that there's some additional water that's getting in the system that shouldn't be there. This is just a, a simple a slide on just kind of the things that you would do to, to investigate and just saying like, hey, this is something that we'll look at probably um, in the spring um, as we start getting some, some wetter weather to try to understand maybe where, what are some of the sources that I and I in for, for that particular mm -hmm. section. So with that, if there's any questions on the study, I can answer those now or I'll just turn it over to Bill and he's gonna just quickly highlight um, uh, the, the water sewer capital improvement plan. Essentially, studies like this, the sanitary sewer study, and then back in 2020, we did your water system study. Coming out of those studies, he identifies things that, whether it's additional analysis or maybe it's a, you know some manhole rehab or an extension of pipe, or some, something, those types of things that are identified in these studies go into your water and sewer capital improvement plan, and those are typically updated like every five years. So in this case, this is the new one for 2023 to 2027. Bill? You wanna go to the next slide, please? Um, <clears throat> this kind of breaks down what we're looking at um, when we take these two studies and kind of identify certain things that, um, or it could be potentials in the future, and we want to put them in a capital plan and kind of keep an eye on them and see if it's something we want to do. Um, so you can see that, um, sorry, the screen's a little blurry. You know, um, there's a painting of the water tower, the exterior of the water tower that's out in 2027. Um, we have a Vactor truck that we're looking to purchase in 2024. So oh, basically we're just taking uh, these two studies and, and coming up with a good capital plan. Does anybody want to, is there anything we want to dive into on this? Any board members? I know we've talked about some of this in detail, but this is just a plan for the next through 27 and beyond. Keep them rolling then. There are some larger numbers on there, but those are projected future numbers like four and five years out. Vector truck, half a million bucks. Anything you want to cover on this, Bill, or I'm gonna keep flipping? Um, no, go ahead and keep flipping. Nope, well, that's it. That was it. I mean, there's some uh, other projects like um, upgrades in water mains and um, some of the older neighborhoods that uh, we're keeping an eye on is, as the mains start to fail, and then we'll, those are the projects that we'll start putting forward more. All right, are there any comments or questions from Bormius? Yes. Donnie. Um, two, two things, one, I know that we did a grant application, and I don't know if that had anything to do with any of these upgrades. And then the other one was um, these um, projections and the build-out projections are based on our comment, our current um, zoning, right? So, like, if if we have like a PUD that comes down the line and it's supposed to be, you know, two two parcels per ten acres, and we put two hundred, will that make a difference in these numbers? Of yeah. So, great question. So, when we look at the future build-out, we do both. So, it's current zoning as well as master land use zoning. And it'll be whatever more dense, essentially, or higher will be what's in the model. So when a development comes in, and if it's say it was zoned, you know, for something or master plan for something, and what's proposed is greater, as part of our first initial review, we take that data and we analyze it with the model to in, to find out whether or not there is issues with this with the system. So that is immediately one of the first things we check. When a, when a PUD gets proposed, when it's not per that zoning, to, to understand whether or not it has an impact on the capacity of your, of your system. 
as you can tell, most of your system is in great shape. 99% of it has, uh, has capacity and is in great shape. The one section that potentially has issues, like if a development were to come in there, as an example, and if it was proposed to be a lot more dense than what is current zoning or master plan, <laughs> then that would certainly be a comment of ours because that's an area of concern for us. Um, so that is something that we do as part of our reviews, and it is something that is paid attention to and looked at every submittal that comes in. Oh, and the grants, I know that you guys apply for it, but I'm, I don't know if it has to do with yeah. this what, or we, if it has to do with stormwater or what. Oh. Yeah, so the one thing that we did a notice of intent on was uh, for the wastewater lift station upgrades um, with the for the clean uh, the clean water fund, and the we do have in this uh, CIP I think one or two of them in here. Um, we applied through that fund because there's talks of possibly forgiveness with the uh, infrastructure monies that are coming down. So we put in there, hey, if we had to replace all of them, it would be X amount of millions. But if we can get half of it paid for by the Infrastructure Act, then it's probably a, a wise thing to, to do. Most of all those lift stations were built in 1970, so they're 52 years old now. Um, so they're, you know, they're, they really are coming up to their useful life probably in the next you know, zero to 25 years or so. And I know some of the parts are getting hard to replace. Um, so that's that's... Uh, that's one of the ones that we applied for. A s small part of that's already in here to plan for um, in case we don't go that route. Um, but if we can get principal forgiveness, then we certainly would like to take advantage of that. No, no word on those okay. yet. Um, and I think just because it's something that we don't talk about that often, but if you look at our budget tonight, you'll see we have... Um, of the $100 million, $100 million um, fund balance, all funds, majority of that is in the water and sewer infrastructure. Um, it's not all cash, it's infrastructure as well. Um, can you just talk just for a minute because we don't talk about it often. Um, compare, I know you kind of said a lot of words, but in, in a short elevator speech, how is our system compared to a lot of community systems around us? I love it. Very them. tight. Yeah. I mean, I know that. It's good for the residents to hear. I mean, this is one area that gets overlooked a lot. Not a lot of, sometimes when communities forget to plan for things, you none of the stuff is cheap, right? One piece of equipment's half a million dollars. When we upgrade a lift station, it's usually half a million dollars. But our, our system is relatively, Newer, I mean, we've been, this board's approved almost every month we're approving some project, right? So, um, is there I, anything else you give you an example. So, you know, we do a lot of studies for different communities throughout Southeast Michigan and some of the peak factors, which is really, you know, kind of goes to the condition of the system and, it, and, and, you know, some of it's age, but a lot of it is condition. So that, that's the, essentially the dry weather flow versus when it rains, what is the flow? Um, and you know, there's there's some communities that have issues where that peak factor is 30. You know, a lot of systems that we see have peaking factors of eight to 10, and that's called the whole system. When your peaking factor is two, that it means you're extremely dry, which is a good thing. Um, again, five for a lot of systems is is actually not even something to worry about, but because of Again, what the rest of your system looks like, five is an anomaly. And based on where it's at, it's like, hey, if there's a quick investigation, whether it's a, a leaky joint or a manhole, it's something that's quickly, easily fixable that you, you fix it. But in some places where, the, where, again, the system is tight, a peaking factor of five generally isn't even something that they would investigate because they're dealing with peaking factors of 10 and 12 and 14. And those are the areas they investigate. Awesome. Your system's very tight. I know we're talking a lot about the sewer, but the water side's just as, I think, equally as good. Great. Well, thank you, Jim, and thank you, Bill. Um, and that was perfect for your last meeting, Donnie. It's so interesting. No, but she's been, I mean, she, Donnie has been one of the people that have been asking about this over and over and over in a good way just to make sure that we are planning because I'm not trying to say bad things about other communities, but We've seen even nearby us when communities don't have a strong plan, it creates lots of issues. 
steep rate increases, and we're actually working with Ashley and, and Bill to do a rate study on uh, next year, right? Next year? Put it in the C uh, CIP. Put it in the CIP. It's in, our, in our water and sewer rates are exponentially cheaper than most of our neighbors. So the lowest, around. lowest around. There we go. You heard it from Bill. All right. Uh, moving on to... Uh, um, before we do the proclamation, I did want to, as presentations, I didn't add it here, but I just want to share something briefly um, related to two presentations. One, um, uh, the Shop of the Hero event, this is worth m mentioning at the beginning of the meeting because it's such an impactful event and we had lots of people in this room even give money to help make this happen. Um, but thanks to Lieutenant Ophira, who's here, who um, led the charge from our Orient substation uh, but there he is, and I joked with him, he's a terrible shopper. <laughs> you can tell he is. Uh, uh, but we had so much fun. Um, we even hugged it out at the end. Um, this is one of the young men that um, was in a really, did not have a place to put his head. <laughs> I don't know how, what I can actually say. Um, and now we've found him living arrangements, and he got Legos, and his mom sent this picture to Darren because he finally had a place he could actually open a toy and play with it, which was pretty awesome. We forget about how blessed we are. And then something that's really cool happening, you want to talk about this, Darren, just what you're doing over the last week and maybe a little bit more into this week, just random acts of please kindness? <laughs> uh, we've had some anonymous donors and many, many kind citizens of Oregon uh, that have donated a lot of funds for the deputies to randomly go out, meet kids, meet families that maybe need a little bit of help and we're able to give them money just to help out during a difficult time. So we're doing that all last week. Uh, the one picture of me, that was just before, that was tonight. So we are continuing this until the end of the year, until funds run out. If anybody still wants to donate, feel free to drop it off at the substation. We will keep it going. Thank you. They're really, and, and the nice thing is our deputies um, obviously have contact with lots of residents and they, um, know where the help is needed. So thank you to people that have given. And if you want to give, you can stop by the substation right next door here and, if, uh, and, and help. And then one more real exciting thing I'll say before we move on to our meeting is um, thanks to Aaron Watley and our parks team. That's an ice rink. I took that picture a few hours ago. It's at the old Township Hall site just south of here. Um, it's not open yet, um, but maybe soon. Soon. So very cool public ice rink. We think um, that's a good idea, Julie. We're going to put, I think if we can find those igloos, put some igloos out there so maybe parents can stay warm. Uh, but that is our new ice rink. And uh, we're working on some other fun stuff too. So with that, we'll move back to uh, um, the next item on our agenda, which is a proclamation. Uh, this is celebrating Arbor Day, which is not really right now. But the reason we're doing this right now is because uh, we are a tree city. Uh, and it's one of the things in order to maintain our status as a tree city, which allows us to have an opportunity to not only do educational opportunities, but uh, have a chance to earn grant dollars. One, this is one of the annual requirements. So we're getting it in the last meeting of the year, uh, but we're proclaiming April 29th, celebrated as Arbor Day in Orient Township, urging residents to do the same, plant some trees and help our green canopy one of the things people love the most about our community. So we will declare that proclamation uh, to have been held. And now we move on to next item on our agenda, Donnie's favorite pot time, paying the bills. I'm deferring it tonight. Are you? Okay, there's the, the passing of the torch. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Supervisor, I would uh, move to approve the bills in the total amount of $2,000,000. $16,535.10 with a few comments. Support. Moved by Urbanowski, supported by Steele. Go ahead with your comments. Uh, first, in general, overall comments are um, it looks a lot different when you're, you know, filing through all the bills <laughs> one by one. I find them all interesting in, in a different way now, but... Uh, if you're looking at the at the bills, there are two rather large amounts, and I just thought I would bring up what those are. Um, the first one is for City of Rochester Hills, three hundred and five thousand nine hundred dollars. That's for our water bill, and then um, there's a total for Oakland County Treasurer for eight hundred and twenty-two dollars eighty-five cents. Um, 
that is for a couple different things, uh, but the two major ones are the, uh, the sewage disposal for 310,285 uh, and the sheriff patrol for uh, 453,802. Um, ones I found the most, most interesting today. All right. Any comments or questions on the bills from the board members? Any public comments? Seeing no one rush forward, um, Trustee Dalrymple, would you please call the roll? Barnett. Yes. Steele. Yes. Bernie. Yes. Dalrymple. Yes. Urbanowski. Yes. That passes 5 0. Uh, next item on tonight's agenda is public comment. Uh, we allow members of the public to chat with us throughout the meeting. This is your first chance on items that are not on the agenda. We ask that you keep your comments to three minutes or less. And we want to give pu public comment on anything that's not on our agenda tonight. Come on forward and introduce yourself, please. Hello, good evening. I'm Joyce Donaldson, the president and CEO of the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce. Good evening, happy Monday. Um, I just wanted to mention we are planning for the new year, and I just wanted to share a few dates that I'm hopeful that you'll put on your calendar. First off, we have our annual meeting and membership appreciation breakfast at the Orient Center. It's going to be free, sponsored by our board of directors, and we're lucky enough to have Supervisor Barnett as one of our guest speakers. Um, on the week of February 12th, in celebration of Valentine's Day, we're going to be doing a We Love Our Small Business Appreciation Walk, delivering of course, sweet treats of some sort. And then also on February 16th, in honor of Valentine's Day, we have our We Love Our Members Mixer in collaboration with the Rotary Club. And last but not least for that first quarter, March 8th on Wednesday, we have our Women in Business Conference <coughs> in celebration of International Women's Day on March 8th. So we're super excited about that and want to continue the fourth annual Women in Business Conference. Thanks so much and happy holidays. Thank you. The one thing you didn't mention was the date of the breakfast. I didn't hear it, but. The date of the annual meeting and membership appreciation <laughs> breakfast is February 2nd. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I knew that, but I don't know if you said it. So anyone else want to get public comment at this time? Seeing none, we'll give you a chance as we move through items on the agenda that are of interest. Moving on to approval of tonight's agenda, um, uh, members of the board, I'd like to respectfully ask to add two items to pending business tonight and note, um, uh, first of all, I'll, I'll go through those and then I'll tell you one more thing. Uh, I'd like to add item 10B, uh, the Treasury Consultant um, Agreement. Item 10C, this is a lot of T's, but it's a trustee, treasury, Training and Transition. <laughs> I don't know who thought that would be fun to name it like that. Donnie, they're pointing at you. Um, and then I'd like to note that um, at your places tonight, I have the um, item uh, 9P, which is boards, commissions, and committee appointments. Um, that was at your place tonight. Uh, and you'll note that this doesn't, and there are a couple spots that um, we knew for sure what was going to the change that was going to happen. Um, for example, the Indian Lake, Indianwood Lake Board is supposed to be the township treasurer, so we know that's going to be Kim. But a lot of the other township board, a lot of maybe you don't know this, but every single person up here is on anywhere from one to five additional committees beyond this meeting that we do twice a month here. Um, and so because we will be adding a new trustee, um, I thought we would wait until January when we fill that seat and then uh, go back through. But the one that's at your place tonight are our volunteer residents that are on these boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, so that is at your place tonight. Those are my proposed changes. Are there any other changes or a motion to approve as amended? Donnie? I will make the motion to approve the agenda as amended. Support. Moved by Steele and supported by Bernie. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, that's the plan for the night. And tonight's uh, first item of business is our consent agenda, which consists of the following items. I always read these because some people watch from home and uh, they don't always see this. We'll be approving two sets of minutes. We will be uh, accepting a, a committee resignation. 
I'll be approving the 2023 quarter improvement authority meeting date schedule. Uh, we'll be walking, uh, we'll be approving the uh, trustee appointment process. We'll be updating a job description from the, for the special assistant to the supervisor. We'll be uh, receiving and filing the matured, called, and purchases of securities and bonds for water and sewer and general fund accounts. We'll be promoting firefighter Andrew Martinez to the rank of lieutenant. Uh, we'll be approving our 2023 non-union salary rates, our sanitary sewer meter study 2022, approving purchasing door security system software protection, awarding a bid for planning and zoning consultant services, approving the 2023 NOHAS participation agreement and resolution, approving the cable commission's proposed budget, approving the organized um, updated org chart, um, approving those board and commission and committee appointments, as I just mentioned, the fire department standard of cover, customer centered strategic plan analysis, and finally approving year end budget adjustments. There's a lot, this is our last meeting of the year. Is there a motion to approve all those things? Mr. Supervisor, I'll make a motion to approve the amended consent agenda. Support. Moved by Steele and supported by Bernie. Uh, first, any board comments? And if any member of the public wants to address us on any of these items, we want to come forward, but we'll go to the board first. Um, I'd like to just bring a couple things to, to the public's attention. Um, first off, this will be posted on our website um, tomorrow, maybe even tonight, possibly. Uh, but many, we've already had some interest from residents asking how will we fill the empty seat um, because Donnie will be leaving us and Kim will be moving down here and there'll be an empty seat. Uh, so this is how we're gonna do that. Um, effective tomorrow, as you all know, uh, I think Kim Urbanowski will become our treasurer and uh, we will have a vacancy per the state law. It allows the township board, we can do a couple different things. We can um, appoint someone to fill the vacancy from now through November 20th, 2024, or we can hold a special election. So we don't wanna do that, that's expensive. So we're going to be putting a committee together to receive um, applications from anyone that's interested in the township and they have to be 18 years old and um, a township resident, right, Dan? That's right. That's the requirements. Uh, so we'll be posting the vacancy tomorrow. You'll see it on social media. It'll be on our website. It'll probably be in the Lake Orion Review, among a few other places. We'll be accepting applications through January 4th at 4.30 p.m. Uh, there'll be instructions on our website and as to where you can send and what you'll need to send. And then the week of January 9th, we'll be con conducting candidate interviews. Uh, we don't know if we'll receive one or two applicants or if we'll receive 100. <laughs> so the goal of that subcommittee is to take time that week to um, boil it down to bring a recommendation or recommendations to the board for consideration at our regular meeting scheduled for Tuesday, January 17th. It's Tuesday because the 16th is Martin Luther King Day. So uh, that is the process. If you're here in person or watching at home and you're interested in sitting up here with us, um, you can reach out to our office for more information and this will be posted on our website tomorrow. So I wanted to cover that briefly. Um, we will save Martinez for last here. Um, I do wanna say that we are making a switch to our planning and zoning consultant um, services. Uh, this, this board appointed a committee. We conducted interviews uh, with planning director Tammy Gerling and others, and as well as a couple of members of our planning commission. And it's that committee's unanimous recommendation to um, hire Carlisle Wartman for planning services. And if you're familiar, they were our planning consultant for a couple decades um, until we hired Giffels Webster. We wanna thank Giffels Webster for their services. We'll still have some interaction with them over the next month or so as we are onboarding and offboarding. Um, I think those are my comments, except for, um, we'll turn it to the chief in a moment. Is there any other comments or questions from the board on any of these items on consent? Is there any public comment on any of these items? The fire department's running on a lot of runs right now and we're losing them, so we should stop talking and take care of this next piece of business. Uh, chief, will you just mention um, maybe a little bit about the process and and what we're doing tonight with Mr. Martinez, and then we'll vote, and then we'll let you uh, come up, we'll have him come forward, but you can come up and the podium, please. 
Good evening, Mr. Supervisor, members of the board. So a little bit of history. Obviously, as you already mentioned, we are here to promote Andrew Martinez from firefighter paramedic to lieutenant paramedic. The process um, isn't really necessarily easy. Um, there is a 100-question third-party written exam that's administered, so they had six months to study for it. There were multiple books they had to read. It was done by a third-party uh, international company that does it. Um, and then there was a grueling kind of laugh, but uh, he had to sit before the three captains, myself and the assistant chief, and Deanna from HR. She proctors us so that we keep in line and don't say anything we're not supposed to. Um, but it was about an hour and a half, and there are scenarios. It's scenario-based. Uh, it's uh, standard operating procedures that he needs to know. Our MAPIS, since we're a mutual aid uh, part of the MAPIS group, uh, there was multiple scenarios that he had to kind of give us his strategy and tactics on what he would do is going from a paramedic lieutenant to, or a paramedic firefighter to lieutenant taking on a totally different role and put you in a different position. Um, so that was the process. So he sat with us, uh, like I said, about an hour and a half and went through scenarios and um, had to give us his rationale and strategy and tactics. And um, Andrew got selected to be before you guys for promotion tonight. Awesome. So typically what I do is read the proclamation, but I did something a little different. Uh, we haven't had a lieutenant's <coughs> position promoted in several years. So what I did is I came up with something a little different. So well, let's uh, vote first. Oh. And then we can. OK, very good. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Thank you. So we'll make it official. Then you can make it official official. All right. Um, Ms. Dalrymple, will you please call the roll on the consent agenda? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Dalrymple? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Steele? Yes. Now it's official. <clears throat> Mr. Martinez. <laughs> Lieutenant Martinez. Would you please come forward? <coughs> You'll just have to stand while I do my speech here. Okay, I'll make it really quick. Okay, a little different than normal, like I said. Uh, typically, I read the proclamation, but uh, <laughs> so this is kind of uh, just like I said, a little different. Uh, so I titled it kind of the company officer because that's what Andrew will be now. Uh, it's the most important job in the fire service. So Oscar Wilde, he was an Irish poet who died in 1900. He had a very famous quote that is still quite relevant in today's fire service. He said, experience is a very hard and expensive teacher. It gives the test first, then you get to learn the lessons. This is so true of the new company officer in today's modern fire service. So the company officer, or in Andrew's case, lieutenant, is the most important position in the fire service. Company officers are the backbone and primary leaders of all fire departments. Chiefs may set the policy and procedures, as well as write the rules and regulations. However, nothing gets accomplished without the company officer or lieutenant. Um, this, in most cases, in fire departments, is a first-line supervisor role, which Andrew will be taking on effective tonight. Uh, his or your primary our job is to see that it works, uh, that it works, and whatever works needs to get done, and done in a safe and efficient manner, whether it is stretching a tack hose line or washing the apparatus after a call. Uh, you as a lieutenant keep the stations functioning smoothly and hopefully harmoniously. A company officer's job focuses on the most dangerous and stressful aspect of the job, preparing your firefighters and leading them into a fire. As a company officer, your job is to lead your crew at emergencies and then prepare them to respond to the next emergency, such as prioritizing your training, keep your crew focused on firefighting, be a positive role model, be adaptable, understand your own limitations as well as those of your crew. On the fire ground, you must make decisions, and usually these are made with minimal and sometimes poor information. So as Theodore Roosevelt said, in any moment of decision, the best thing to do is the right thing, the next best thing is the wrong thing, and the worst thing to do is nothing. So the company officer is a complicated job that can be very rewarding. Take care of your people, and they will take care of you. Remember, you are the boss now. Act like one. Don't let your ego and pride interfere with you and your leadership and decision making. Congratulations. Get, um, if we could get 
everyone that's part of the Martinez family crew here, well, let's come stand right up here in front of us. The board will stand up here. And then any fire personnel that's here, we'd love you to come stand up here as well. We should have done it in backwards order. Hey, Andrew, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. You did good. Chief, if we get you in the middle, probably with with Lieutenant, and then everybody else is kind of are we centered? Perfect. There you go. Sam, can you get everybody? All right. Congratulations. There's snacks in the lobby. Which doesn't always happen. Celebrating a new lieutenant and a new uh, state rep. There you go. And a treasure. And a new treasure. All kinds of great things. It's Costco cake. <laughs> Which means it's good. I didn't get I didn't get it fast enough. <laughs> yeah, did you see on that planning and zoning consultant the son of a letter? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay. I was just, right just before I forget. All right. Um, moving on to pending business. As mentioned earlier, the most important job of your elected body is to decide how we spend your tax dollars, and that's what we are doing tonight. Um, I'm going to toss this to I'm going to turn this over to Ashley um, in a moment. Um, but the request tonight, I'll, I'll kick it off, and then I'll turn it over to our budget and procurement director, is to um, adopt our 2023 budget. Um, adopting a balanced budget is required by stat, uh, state law. And I'm excited to say in the 10 years I've been here, we have um, done a really good job of this. And I'll say it just like that because it's not me, it's, a whole, it's the whole board, it's the team behind the scenes, who you'll hear from some of them in a minute. Um, really proud of, of the work we do on the, on the uh, resources that we are presented with. And uh, we've had, uh, if you're just watching this piece of it, we've had at least three budget work sessions and probably 100 plus uh, department and interdepartmental meetings and board members have come and met with individual directors and with our budget and procurement director, Ashley Coyle. So well, this part of the meeting might not be real long, we've had hours and hours and hours and hours of discussion leading up to this point. Uh, so there is a resolution um, and it is updated at your place tonight um, from what was sent in the board pack and I will go over that in a minute after the presentation, but it, we added a line uh, into section nine. We added a sentence there uh, tonight, and I'll cover that afterwards. Um, but for now, I'm going to turn it over to our budget and procurement director, Ashley Coyle, who will walk us through a few highlights and uh, be able to take questions from there. You want me to, what, what number? Oh, you pushed the wrong button. Oh, no. <laughs> um, what number are you? Ooh. South. South. Okay, it should go off now. Um, Intimidating. Um, are you plugged in right? Having all sorts of difficulties today. I pushed it over to South. Is there another plug you could try if that doesn't work? Got it. There we go. All right, so what I'm gonna to present tonight isn't going to be a surprise to anybody up on the board. It's what we've discussed in every one of the workshops. And as Chris mentioned, we've been having workshops since September. So there's been a ton of work even prior to that. Um, so the first slide here, the fund breakdown, these are all of our major funds. The current fund balance is what we have in our current savings account, so prior to this year. 
2022 projected is what we're anticipating finishing just the 2022 year with. So for instance, in the general fund, we're looking to add almost another $2.5 million on top of the $3 million we already have. So the general fund's in really, really great shape. Um, and typically the 2022 projections or any year end projection are very conservative. So my estimate is we are going to end up putting more than the 2.5 that's shown here. Some of the funds are anticipating dipping into their fund balance, um, but what is not listed here is the ARPA funding that we were awarded last year. Um, so a lot of these funds that are dipping into the red are actually going to be using additional funding outside of that fund balance. The Community Action Program, so under the consent agenda was the no has agreement. So I just wanted to re-highlight that, that moving forward this year, we will be moving towards the $15 copay for the no has program. Historically, it has been a $0 copay, but as you can see in years in the past, um, the, the cost of this program has grown exponentially. So with that being said, the board has agreed to move forward with that $15 copay. The school crossing guards, there was some discussion based on which schools the township would be covering. Um, historically, the township has covered Carpenter Elementary School with Walden and Scripps being covered by the school district. We learned this year that the statute actually states that the sheriff's department is typically responsible for covering those crossing guards. So there was an agreement that went out today, um, spearheaded by Ms. Del Rumpel, that Majority of the parties, if not all of them, are going to agree to split those bills three ways. So the township would be responsible for Carpenter, for instance. The sheriff's department would be responsible for Walden, and then the school department, or I'm sorry, the school system would be responsible for Scripps. So I just wanted to make the board aware that that is now built into the budget. We do have something in writing versus just the 1980s resolution that we were able to dig up. <coughs> The proposed personnel changes, so all of these are built into the budget as we've discussed in the last three workshops. Um, however, I wanted to make it crystal clear that none of these positions will be filled and or posted prior to coming back to the board. So if any of these departments are interested in filling these positions, they do need to bring it back in front of the board for discussion. Um, we just wanted to take a more conservative, conservative route, so we did um, build these into the budget just to get a more clear picture of where we were at, but it does not give the department's authorization to move forward with, with these hires. And that's basically the presentation. So if you guys have any questions or if any member of the public has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So we've talked a lot about all these things. Um, we're keeping a very high level tonight. We are proposing a balance, uh, adopting a balanced budget, not spending any of our, you can still have a balanced budget and spend some of your savings account or your rainy day, or we call it fund balance in the government finance world, but we are not proposing to do that. We're proposing um, to, it's not a lot, but you can see that $17,752, that's what we're proposing um, to put into our bank account at the end of this year. The one thing that I'm really proud of is this is the 10th, budget for several of us. And every single year um, that I've been here and supervisor, and this is not, this is a compliment to our directors and the board, not, I'm not taking credit to be clear, but every single year we've performed better than our projections. We've spent less, we brought in more revenue. Um, we are proposing, we are presenting a similar budget this year where we think we have our expenditures conservatively, and that means generally on the high, high side or make sure we're covered and our revenue also conservatively projected. So we're hopeful to continue that track um, that we're on. And if you come to the state of the township, you'll get to see that frugal meter. The taxes that we're responsible for, which does not include the school taxes, but all the other, most of the other um, millages uh, were, were, the, were the best in the business, at least around here, for how we spend your dollars. So um, thank you for that high level overview. I'm gonna take control of the screen for one moment because I wanna show the change to the resolution tonight um, to the board members, um, and this is at your place. Um, one of the discussions was we have had, we're having internal discussions on these proposed new positions, which Ashley just had on the screen. Um, 
And we, we wanted to make sure that it's clear that until th th that these positions, while we have budgeted for them, there's still this ongoing discussions with, um, with some of them and when will they start, how will they start. Um, uh, as was mentioned, there's a, um, positions in several different departments. And we added this line in the yellow that basically says, even though that money is budgeted and planned in each department, um, those dollars will not be authorized to pay for wages or benefits or anything else without um, prior board approval. So all those new positions that were on that slide um, will have to come back. So I'll, I want you to put that slide back up one more time, please, Ashley, because that was the main focus. A lot of the other stuff is, um, you know, we have capital improvement and things like that um, in the budget, lots of parks um, things coming. Um, and we'll put a nice presentation online kind of showing all those things. But these are the proposed um, additional positions. As you see, we're adding a police deputy, um, among other things there. All right. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Ms. Steele. Aaron, could you just go over briefly the, what you have planned for next year for um, on that other screen that you had with the spreadsheet where it shows $1.9 million being spent? And I know that's our so much. Funds. Yeah. So much is planned. Uh, but that's what, that's what that is for, is yeah. that you, the m money has already been allocated. It's already sitting there. Yep, the board has approved ARPA funding that went into our fund balance, and so sort of we've kind of uh, been lining up projects and ready to roll in 2023. So a good portion of the funding, um, the $1.9 million, will be dedicated towards Camp Agawam. So we have our Peterson Lodge. That'll be roughly a, a million-dollar project. Um, Samantha Temko has uh, applied for a grant to double that funding. So that would not only just do the lodge infrastructure, it would do accessibility down to the beach, the whole accessibility, um, parking lot, walkways, really renovate the entire area. Um, and then we have a, a variety of other projects throughout the park, smaller things. So, But um, if all goes well, it'll be a, probably... Uh, a $2.3 million investment over at Camp Aguan for next year. And it's red because? Yeah. We're, we're pulling from our fund balance. So okay. the, the board put in, um, paid for wages through ARPA, and then went into our fund balance in preparation for these projects that you approved. So we're using our savings account to do Yeah, and so the way it works is on the financial statements, if any of the public cares, um, on the balance sheet, there are different designations. So for instance, the current fund balance on the sheet is unrestricted funds. So the board could authorize to use that funding for any, any expenditures that they saw fit. Um, and then we have a separate bucket that's designated specifically for ARPA projects based on what the board adopted at the end of last year. So Aaron's asking um, during this budget cycle, most of that negative 1.9 million is for those ARPA projects. And the only way he can spend any of that savings account is by adopting a negative budget, which has all been reviewed. The funding is all there um, and it's clearly disclosed on the balance sheet. Thank you. Other questions from board members? Um, Aaron, go ahead. I was just going to say one more thing. Um, the projects that we have lined up are from our uh, five-year master plan from our community. So Peterson Lodge, Charity Pavilion, all the things that the community members said. It's not just arbitrarily we're picking projects. They're all what everybody would like. So. And you'll be doing another master plan this next year. Correct. 2023, there'll be uh, plenty of opportunities for the community to uh, give input and say the direction they want the recreation, trails, green space in our community for the next five years, so. Great. Well, are there any comments or questions from board members? I mean, there might not be a lot because we've had, by the way, all our work sessions are, were open to the public. We didn't have a lot of public participation, but uh, we met in this room. Um, okay, we have all the directors here tonight as well, so thank you for being here. Is there any public comment? Um, actually, we, should, we need a motion first. To um, I'll make that motion. Go ahead, and if you could reference the. Um, yeah, and and this is on our website, but you can. This is the resolution to adopt the budget, but it's it's a.
couple hundred pages, and you can see every single fund, every line. Um, every yes. expense, every revenue. Every expense, <laughs> every revenue, everything. So uh, it's all there. I'm not going to go page by page. I mean, I could, but go ahead, Ms. Dalrymple. I move to approve the amended resolution of the Charter Township of Orion adapting the budget and setting the millage levy, a resolution to establish and define the adoption of the budgets, uh, levy millage, and to make appropriations for the fiscal year of 2023, thereby adapting the 2023 budget <coughs> as presented. Support. Okay. Now, is there any public comment? No one come forward. Is there any other board comments or questions? I always have them, so I'm not going to go first. So let somebody else go first. I just want to say thank you to all of the directors for working so hard and answering all of our questions all fall long. And uh, every time we <laughs> ask something, that you would get back to us. And um, I can't wait to see all of these projects come to life. Any other board member? Donnie? Okay, so I have been very vocal about some of the things that I have liked in this budget and have not liked. But first of all, I'd like to say, Ashley, you have done an excellent job of transitioning from the previous budget that I saw and then I worked off 10 years ago to today. And it's so much more transparent. I would say our old budget was a C minus and I give you a minus. So there's a little room for you. <laughs> so, so I really appreciate that. And um, I know that was a lot of work to clean up and use old spreadsheets and put everything in there. So when you see this budget, it's got every nickel in and out coming in. And I think that that's from all your hard work, yours and tandem. So I really appreciate it. Um, I am always concerned about the government getting too big and expanding too much. And one way of doing that is hiring um, too many people. And I have made that uh, very known that I want to make sure that we're utilizing all of the resources that we already have in the township, making sure that we're integrating between departments, utilizing um, free hands per se to make sure that um, we don't necessarily have to always hire new people. We have left the silo building and now we're in a much more open floor plan. And I know that that's really on Chris's list to uh, integrate some of, you know, like, okay, I can ask, ask a, I can answer a tax question. I can answer a, a water bill question and that everybody in the township can do the same thing. And I think that will help on hiring extra people in the future. Um, and, and I appreciate Tammy taking on the assessing um, and all your knowledge that you have had in assessing. And you know, we've missed a couple loops because we've had a little bit of turnover and to have that in your department I appreciate you taking that on so I fully fully support your additional person because you're taking on an extra person um, and I did not want to vote no on this budget because it is balanced but uh, what Chris did do is put in there that uh, none of these funds can be used for any other purpose than hiring people and that everybody hires has to go before the board and we are meeting with, well, I'm not, but you guys are, meeting with the financial consultant Woodhill, and they are um, hoping, I'm hoping that they will uh, make some of the processes better within our financial departments, and we don't necessarily have to hire people like in the clerk's department to help the overflow with accounts payable. So I'm anxious that that will um, work out well. So those are my comments. Um, I published all my comments in the last workshop so people can review those of my concern. I think we're headed into a, uh, more of a recession of an economy where we need to retract. Right now we're not there, but we just have to be open to that coming um, in 2023 and beyond. So that is, and I stayed on just so I can finish this budget, Chris, just for you. Thank you. <laughs> We've done 10. 10. Um, I think, um, thank you for your comments, and, and I'll tell you, you know, we don't always agree, and that's okay. And Donnie has been really good at um, always making sure we sharpen our pencil. And so, Kim, that's your role maybe now, or whoever's going to be in this seat. Um, not that we don't all think the same way, because um, we do have a good conservative board, but um, thank you. And thanks for being willing to share your concerns, but also be collaborative on how we can hopefully 
all be unanimous in this work. So I don't see anyone else rushing forward. I don't see any other board members with their hands raised. Um, the motion was made by Dalrymple, supported by Ranowski, to adopt the budget with the um, amended resolution that was at your place tonight with that additional line uh, regarding new hires. Uh, would you please call the roll, Ms. Dalrymple? Dalrymple, yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Barnett? Yes. Steele? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Uh, thank you, everyone, and thank you, directors, for all being here, and uh, Ashley for taking the lead on this project. Uh, next, we have two, I believe, relatively quick items that probably could have been on consent, except that I believe... Um, Ms. Urbanowski will want to recuse herself from one item and Ms. Steele will want to recuse herself from the other. So um, the first item has to do with uh, the appointment of a tre treasury consultant. Ms. Steele, do you, would, would you like a, to request to be recused from this? Yes, please. please um, someone would like to make a motion to recuse Ms. Steele? I move to recuse Treasurer Steele. <laughs> Support. Moved by Bernie, supported by Urbanowski, and you can just stay here, Donnie, if it's okay. You just can't comment on this item. Um, this item was approved by the board uh, at our meeting on December 5th um, to continue to pay the treasurer, outgoing treasurer, Donnie Steele, um, through the end of this month. Um, our attorney has put together this agreement that's in our packet tonight that um, basically just codifies that agreement in black and white. Um, so I don't really have much more to say to say to it except the board already voted on this and now we're just voting to approve this agreement um, that solidifies and clears up any confusion if there was any. Anything else I need to say on that, Mr. Kelly? No. Is there a motion to approve the agreement of the Treasury consultant? I move to approve the attached agreement. Support. Moved and supported. Uh, and is there any discussion? Any public comment on this item? Or um, Ms. Steele is helping to continue the transition of Ms. Urbanowski through December 31. Ms. Urbanowski. Yeah, I just would like to say that no, we've already started the work and I really appreciate uh, having uh, Treasurer Steele as a, a support system. She's giving me a lot of really great information so far, and I think it's a um, smart move to, um, to keep moving forward. So I appreciate right. your help. Thank you. I agree. Echo that. Um, Ms. Dalrymple, will you call the roll? And don't call um, Donnie, please. Okay. Urbanowski. Yes. Burnett. Yes. Bernie. Yes. Dalrymple, yes. All right. Next item, as Kim so duly noted, we already have started the process. The second part of that process is um, the willingness, in which I appreciate, of Ms. Urbanowski to uh, start ahead of tomorrow so that there could be as smooth of a transition as possible, and she has done that. So I think the first item would be, um, Ms. Urbanowski, would you like to say anything at this time? I'd like to recuse myself from this. Your motion? I move to recuse Trustee Urbanowski. Support. Okay. Moved by Bernie, supported by Steele. This has to do with Mr. Bernowski. It's, it, that's why we're doing this. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Again, you can stay here because this shouldn't take us long. Um, so this item is, I guess I could try to pull this stuff up on the screen. Um, I'm just going to read it. By the time I find it, we'll be done. Uh, we're asking for approving um, temporary at-will uh, um, appointment of Trustee Urbanowski to, to complete training and development hours uh, to facilitate a smooth transition. Um, we have calculated that the, uh, Ms. Urbanowski has worked 35 hours uh, from December 5th through uh, today. Um, and so we're asking to uh, approve uh, paying her at a rate of 22.30 per hour. Um, and this is very similar, if not identical, to what we did uh, for trust Trustee Dalrymple uh, when she was assisting in the clerk's office for the election. So that's why this is here. I'd entertain a motion at this time. 
I move to approve Kim Urbanowski temporary at will appointment to complete training and development hours with incumbent treasurer at the rate of $22.30 per hour for a total of 35 hours during the dates of December 5th, 2022 through December 19th, 2022. Support. Okay. I believe it's fairly straightforward. Uh, you have a question? I, no, I was just going to make a comment. All we're doing is in a transition. We're both getting paid. So it's just we just have to go and make it a little bit more spelled out specifically in how long. So I'll be here for Kim, but Kim officially takes duties tomorrow and the, her name's on the door. So <laughs> I have to really appreciate um, you guys working with both of us because uh, when I walk away, I'm completely comfortable that she will do just fine. And that's a nice way of doing it. So thank you for supporting us, you guys. I, I agree. I can tell you that if you pay attention to neighboring communities, you don't have to look far to see not all transitions are smooth. And uh, <laughs> it's awesome that we can, again, I, we don't always agree, but it's really nice that we have willing people that are um, willing to help the onboarding process. And it just very, very small amount of money pay, will pay huge dividends in the, uh, in the long run just so there's smooth transition. So thank you both for being willing and hopefully the board for agreeing. Um, I see no more comments. How many how many minutes did you get transitioning for your new job? Zero. I got ten. Yeah. <laughs> <You> got ten. <laughs> Sorry. Ten years in, I still don't know if I know what I'm doing. Ten, ten, ten minutes when I came yeah. out. For, so. I mean, it's a huge. I mean, even this afternoon, I went to look for them, and they're at the bank. I mean, there's there's a lot, so much, yeah. so much. Um, so with that, seeing no one rushed. Anyone want to get public comment on this one? Okay, uh, roll call, please don't call Urbanowski. Steele? Yes. Bernie? Yes. Dalrymple? Yes. Barnett? Yes. That passes 4 0. It's so weird, 4, but um, it's enough. All right, uh, we have two reports that completes our pending business. Our monthly police and fire reports, they're in your packet and on our website if you're interested in seeing all the things that they're up to. Uh, entertain a motion, Mr. Bernie, I usually. Move to receive and file the police and fire report and thank the lieutenant and chief for doing this all year for us. Support. Supported by Urbanowski. Um, anything either, we, either of you want to say? Oh, we lost the chief. The lieutenant's still here. <coughs> well, more, more good deeds? No, just as holidays continue, uh, we have more mental crisis. So if you know somebody who's having a problem, make sure you have uh, yourself or have them call 988, which is the new uh, crisis prevention number. That's a good reminder. Yeah, it's like 911, but 988. And you can get help immediately on the phone for anyone that's in crisis. And it's free. Free. Yes, um, yes this is the time of year where... It's the most wonderful time of the year, and people fight with their families. I concur. All right, all in favor of receiving and filing the police and fire report, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That passes 5 0. And item B, Dan, when, after we recuse, we don't have to bring somebody back in, do we? They just no, automatically. No. Okay, I always forget that. Doesn't happen that often. Our other report is our financial reports, page 452. Yes, if you're interested in joining this board, the board packets tonight is 509 pages. So you do some work here. Uh, financial statements were prepared by the clerk's office and specifically Tandem Graves, our accounting controller, entertain a motion to receive and file. So moved. Support. Urbanowski, Bernie, any comments, questions? Again, if you're interested at home to see where your dollars are going, you can just go ahead and peel through this awesome 60-page yes. document. I have to thank Tandem. She puts her nose down and works hard all day. So thank you, Tandem. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Public comment. Anyone that hasn't gotten a chance to talk to us want to say anything tonight? Seeing no one come forward. We're going to bring it up here to the board. We're going to, Donnie, you're going to be last even okay. after me. You get to say no, the, after you? the last, last, last word. 
<laughs> We're gonna let you adjourn it here. I'm gonna give you the hammer adjourn. and everything. Okay. Um, so let's start with Mr. Bernie tonight. Okay, I'll be brief. Um, just you know, first and foremost, Merry Christmas to everybody and your families. A healthy, healthy, happy, prosperous New Year. Um, and Donnie, I feel like I've been saying goodbye to you for like three weeks now, but um, you will be missed. I promise you. I, and uh, I'm re really proud of you. Thank you. And I hope you go to Lansing and kick some butt. So proud of you. Stay in touch. I know you will. Thank you. And make us proud here. Thank you. All right. Um, Miss Urbanowski, Madam Almost treasure. <laughs> Teetering on the edge. A couple hours here. <laughs> um, I, uh, similar to Trustee Bernie, I, I'm really appreciative of, of everything that you're helping me with this week, but um, honestly, you're going to be missed. I mean, who else is going to come dressed as a tin soldier and as a, a soldier for the holidays? I mean, come on. You, you're a lot of fun, um, and but you're also very um, smart. You one of the Thanks. smartest ladies I've ever met. So, uh, like Brian said, go kick butt mm -hmm. and don't forget, you know, who, you know, that we're here for you. Mm -hmm. So, um, happy Hanukkah and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Julia. Same, watching the slideshow uh, next door before we came into our meeting and seeing so many of the pictures and so many of the projects that we've got to work on, but that you've been able to work on in this community in your time here. It is amazing. I mean, I don't know anybody else who wants to cut the mustard weeds from the path in the middle of the summer when it is hot outside, except for Donnie Steele. Uh, so many projects have been done uh, because a determined lady is going to make them happen. And I'm so proud of you and so excited to see you. Uh, and then I'm also really excited about the ice rink. I saw them start to put that up the other day, so I had to stop my car, and my kids were in there, and they were so excited to see it. And then um, I went back to school and immediately started talking about it, and the questions were, is it ready to go? And I was like, not yet. You have to stay off of it until uh, the sign is no longer there. And I'm so glad that um, Chris mentioned the igloos because I think that would be a great way to recycle those, uh, to put a couple of those out there so that people can have kind of a place to... To go into uh, and I'm really excited to see this happen and I think it will be a huge success which then makes me dream bigger for all the new <laughs> winter activities to come to the Camp Agawam coming soon. Patrick, I know you like that. <laughs> all right. Um, a couple upcoming events I want to go through. Um, just had to look one up there. Uh, some fun winter activities for you and the fam uh, are, we're in the midst of our light up Orion. There's a map on our Parks and Rec page with little Christmas trees. Um, if you wanna take your family on a cool light tour um, or you wanna be registered, if you will, go to our parks website um, or you can go to orionsnowcation.com. We started this during COVID as a fun way to um, engage with people in a safe way and put pictures of all these Clark Griswold House is up all around our website. Um, but that's happening again this year. Submit your photos by last Friday. <laughs> uh, I think that's the date. But, um, but if you still want to be involved, I think you can at least still send us your address, and you can find that on our website, and we can show you the map. Um, but I drove by a couple of these houses the other day, and there are some really, really good ones. And then um, family bingo, winter break. This has become very popular. Um, and we're going to be in our cars again. Uh, unless it's really cold. Except it says it will take, yeah, unless it's, so it's either going to be inside or in the cars. But we had a lot of fun with this at the Orient Center. Check it out. Again, all this stuff you can find on our uh, parks website. And if you haven't signed up for the reminders, please do that. And then I do want to say a couple things. Obviously, welcome to um, officially our treasure, Kim. I know that's a great picture. Um, Actually, before I say that, though, um, I do want to say uh, great news. We have settled two of our three labor contracts, the Teamsters contracts, and the third with the International Association of Firefighters. We um, have tentative agreement on all items. We started that December 27th, 2022. So we're hopefully we beat the one-year deadline, but um, everyone has been awesome. 
Um, but the union president, our local president, Chris Hagan, has been great. Um, everybody has been really great to, to work through this process. So thanks to all of the amazing team members we have. You know, I was just thinking, like, this is the craziest time of the year because we're doing budgets and year-end stuff and um, getting ready to roll out. But I am so grateful. That's the word for me. Um, we, have a, we had a great year. We have a great team. We have great, great people, great residents. And we're on a roll, and it's only getting better. So with that, um, I do, again, welcome Kim. And then, Donnie, um, we're going to stop talking about you after this meeting. That's good. <laughs> but seriously, um, fierce is the word that I think of when I think of Donnie, because you do not tell her no. And I was telling Joe Johnson on camera earlier that um, Donnie and I have had some power walking meetings. <laughs> She prefers not to sit in my office or her office. She prefers to like walk at a high rate of speed and I'm out of breath and I think that's how she gets stuff out of me. But um, you are so, I'm so grateful for your friendship most importantly, but you've given so much to our community and I love you, I appreciate you. So thank you for all you've done. Even though we have fought like brother and sister probably as often as we've gotten along, I usually won. Yeah. No. <laughs> she complains you about too. that. <laughs> I'm getting choked up, but she complains about that, but I, you win. Yeah, you, you do compromise. You do usually throw me a bone. So. <laughs> Thank you, Donnie. So with that, you get the last okay. word and the gavel. So Merry Christmas, and your word was, what was your word? Grateful. 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 And mine is blessed. So I feel blessed. And I want to thank everybody that came out tonight. Thank you very much to everybody that came and celebrated and um, thank the staff today, and Shirley, and she, um, they bought me a, a snow globe with a dragon in it. So, um, very official, so every time I wanna shake it up, I have to remember where I came from, so, and I will never forget. And um, so thank you guys for the, the potluck today, and the meeting tonight, and like you said, today will be my last day, and I won't, will not be in tomorrow unless you call for me I'm gonna take my oath, that's for the next step. So with that, I would like to make, who would like to make a motion? You. I would like to make a motion to adjourn at 828. Support. All in favor? Supported Aye. by everyone. Aye. Opposed? Aye.